Hey, what's going on? My name's Andrew, you can call me Pooch, and I'd like to welcome you to the Less Lonely channel. I'm really glad you're here. Let me be the first to welcome you to the very first monthly photo roundup that we've done here on this channel. This month, the focus is Fuji travel photography, and we're gonna use my most recent trip to Portland as the base. So, what is a monthly photo roundup? Well, I'm really glad you asked. Every month, I'm gonna take my top five photos from the past month and review them with you here on the channel. We're gonna talk through specifics on how I capture the photo as well as the stories that go alongside with them. I think it's gonna be incredibly hard for me to just pick five photos from an entire month, but I'm gonna do my best. And I definitely want you guys to stick through to the end because there is an opportunity for you to get involved in the monthly photo roundup as well. And I'm very excited about having you and your photos in on this process. All right. Enjoy. All right, first things first, let's go ahead and shrink down here. Perfect. I got my phone here as well, so I can talk through the photos and look at them alongside of you. And that brings us to photo number one. Okay, this first photo is from Duger Falls in Washington. And this photo makes the list because I believe this photo is destined to become a postcard or a print. We've got to make it happen. This was on like one of the hottest days we were there. It was 105 degrees. And what's funny is that leaving Memphis and going to Portland, we thought to ourselves, we're gonna get away from the heat. We're gonna be cool, we're gonna be happy. And yeah, no, Oregon and the Pacific Northwest were under a heat advisory. So and that just goes to show you, you can't plan for everything. I believe that this water is like runoff from the mountains surrounding it. So the water was freezing cold. It was refreshing to say the least. All right, photo number two, I call this one over Portland. So this second photo, uh, I chose it for my time flying with my brother in his little two seater prop Cessna plane. And it was, Amazing, an amazing experience, but I'd never been on one. This photo was at that moment, you know, like the plane's just flying straight and he banked to turn into something and just that angle gave me that really cool opportunity to shoot through. Before the flight, my family was like freaking out. They're like, hey, are you nervous? Are you scared? What's gonna happen? And truthfully, I wasn't afraid. I wasn't scared because in my mind, like whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. And like, what's the worst that can happen when you're in a plane? Now, don't answer that. I know what could actually happen, but here's my reasoning for not being afraid. If that's going to happen, what am I going to do about it, truthfully? And if something like that is like truly out of my control, then why would I let that stop me from experiencing things in my life that I wouldn't normally get to? And that's why this photo makes the list. It was a highlight of the trip. It was a great experience. And I think if you ever have the opportunity to go up in a little plane and view the world, you should. All right, photo number three. This one is actually my number one. Out of all five, this is my favorite one. And it's because of the way it was captured. See, it almost looks staged. It almost looks like I asked those guys, hey, can I take your photo? And in reality, I didn't. So for some context, while we were walking on the coast, we saw these boats like come flying in from out in the water, honking their horns. And at first we thought like, oh crap, these boats are in trouble. People need to get out of the way. We're gonna have an issue here. And what was weird to us is that every boat was doing it. So after we walked a little bit, we started making our way back and this boat came in hot honking its horn, flying onto the beach, and it was like really crazy to experience and watch. Now these dudes were like hardcore fishermen, like right, they they look grizzly, and I was a little bit more embarrassed to like be taking their photo. I didn't want to walk up to them and say, hey guys, nice boat, can I take your picture? So I didn't. In reality, well let's pretend this is my camera, I grabbed it like this, put it to my chest, and just started like, firing photos as I walked by them. Nothing to see here, please don't look at me. And obviously they did look at me because I was probably drawing more attention to myself doing this than I would have if I just stopped and taken the photo. Either way, what I love about this photo is that I didn't look through the viewfinder at all. So I didn't even know what the photos looked like until I got them onto my computer. And that's just what makes this so special. The placement of the boat, the rock filling the negative space behind them, the looks of those guys looking haggard after a long day out on the water. I just think this photo really shows off the magic of photography. Moving on to photo number four, and I gotta say, I'm a sucker for good lifestyle food photography. I mean, those are like little beignets. I just wanna grab one off my screen and eat one right now. I can even like taste it and remember how soft and airy and fluffy they were. There's something like so welcoming about food and people enjoying it. It feels so communal, it feels safe. It feels like just something like we're meant to do. And that's why I love capturing it. 
sure, like this photo is lacking context. Like it feels like it belongs in a series of photos. Like we need pictures of the people eating them. We need the bigger shots of the restaurant. We need other plates. Yeah, the photo story is lacking. But when I look at this photo, it brings me back to a cool summer day in Portland enjoying killer food. And last but not least, number five. This one was tough because Looking at this photo, it's not necessarily the most technical, the most beautiful, the color grade isn't killer, but there's still something to it for me. So I lovingly called this photo sun drunk. And this actually brings us back to Duger Falls, but this was at the end of the day. What you didn't see in the first photo was that there was other rocks that people could jump off of, there was more waterfalls that people could swim behind, and like I said earlier, the water was freezing cold. This photo was taken at the end of the day, the sun was setting, we were beat, we had just done the most and it shows, and that's why I love it. When you think through travel photography, you know, my main objective for this was to just capture the memories as they came. And if I were to put like a, a stamp on the overall trip, I think the word that I would use is like content. In this photo, I see a bunch of content people with full hearts. And I think that is the perfect signifier of the trip as a whole. I left feeling incredibly content and super filled up. And there you have it. The first ever monthly photo roundup is done. What'd you think of the theme? Fuji travel photography. Like I said, every one of those photos was taken on a Fuji except for the one R5. Either way, the cameras didn't disappear point. The X100V is still a little beast. The R5 takes killer photos, but beyond all that, beyond all the specs and the details, all that really mattered was did it capture the emotion I was going for. And for this trip, yeah, I think I got the emotion I wanted. Thank you for sticking around and checking these photos out with me. I'm super glad I got to share these memories with you. I mentioned earlier that I want you to get involved in the monthly photo roundup, and here's how we're going to do it. At the end of every month, we're doing one of these videos. If you're a professional photographer, if you're an amateur, or if you feel like you're somewhere in between, I want to share your photos. All you got to do is email me at lesslonelyvlog at gmail.com with one of your favorite photos from the current month and a story that goes with it. Tell me the emotion you were trying to capture. Tell me where you were. Tell me why this is your favorite photo. You can include specs and all that stuff, and if you want me to include that, I will, but what I'm really interested in is the emotion and story behind each photo. I'll review all the photos, and I'll pick my favorite ones and shout you out here on the channel. Think of it as another way to bring you in on the creative journey. And with that, we're gonna wrap up today's video. So if you wanna be less lonely on your creative journey, then you may wanna leave a like, drop a comment and ultimately subscribe to the channel so that we can be creative together and feel less lonely. And before I go, before I go, I have to say to everyone who's recently subscribed to the channel in the past couple weeks, thank you so much. I'm glad to see your faces and welcome to the creative journey. All right, peace.